What's up everybody? Bruno's back. I know I've been kind of MA for a little bit with these with these recaps and these podcasts and all that stuff. I've been doing uh, Evil Dick's podcast every week, Dick at Night. Uh, I've been really busy just with life and everything and, and all together. So it just kind of, you know, these personal podcasts kind of just got pushed aside. But you know what? I figured this is probably the last one I'm going to do. Next weekend, I'm going to be in uh, Toronto at the finale with all the new house guests, season seven, season six, five, whatever. And uh, I'm going to be having a good time. So this is going to be the last chance I'll be able to do one for this season. Um, so we're now down to the final four. And actually, before I get into all that, I just want to take this time to say thank you all for, you know, all the, the sharing and the comments and watching and, and caring for what I have to say uh, about the season and all that stuff. Thank you guys very much for all the love and support. You guys have been absolutely great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for sharing. Thanks for leaving the comments. Uh, I try to answer to every single one of them. Uh, you you know, it's just a little thank you for watching and I'd like to respond kind of thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for the likes, all that stuff. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough. Um, again, thank you for the support. So now we are at the uh, final four. We have um, Anthony, we have Adam, we have Dane and we have Kira. So let's just look back. Okay, guys, who would have thought, you know, day one that this would be the final four. I never, ever, ever would have guessed you know, maybe I could have guessed me one or two of these people, but to have this four as our final four, not a chance. There is not a chance I would have guessed it ever, ever, ever in a million years. And I actually want to talk about kind of last night's eviction episode where you have um, Dane and you have Mark on the block. You know, guys, this is one of those things that it's like, hey, the guy's teed up. Hit it out of the ballpark. Get rid of Dane. This is your chance. At this point in the game... Everything relies on yourself. You can't rely on other people. This is the time to take the people out that are on the block. You know, I'm going to say something right now. Mark was literally a walking, breathing $100,000 check. Every single person should have wanted to bring Mark to the final two. He would lose to everybody. It doesn't matter who he's sitting beside. Whoever he is sitting beside would have won $100,000 plain and simple nobody in that jury was going to give him a single vote so the fact that they vote him out and keep dane is mind-boggling to me it blows my mind because they're basically saying yeah you know what i don't care about the hundred thousand dollars i care about this legacy or whatever the hell they want to call it uh which is total crap to me play the game get the people out that are in your way it's a solos game you don't need to rely on anybody especially especially at this point it's a solo person's game when you're down to the final four five three whatever it is um you're the only one that's going to take you there everyone already has their agendas lined up who who works for them and who doesn't who they think they're going to beat who they think they can't beat and i'm telling you dane is someone that should be out the door because if he's sitting in the final two i think he can beat pretty much anybody left in the house so if they let him get there that's their own fault for giving him the game um, I want to know, leave a comment below, who do you think's going to win, who do you want to win, and who did you think was going to be, just from the beginning or even kind of as the season went on, who did you think was going to be in the final four? Let me know, I'm very curious, and again, let me know who you think is going to win and who you want to win, because that could be two completely different things, and you know what, it's it's at the time of the season where it's like, hey, you're looking back, it's like, do these people deserve to be there? And I'm going to say right now, I think Dane deserves to be there because he battled his way through. Adam definitely deserves to be there. I'm 100% team Adam. I'm going to throw it out there. I, I just, the guy, I don't know. He's a guy that I could see myself getting along with. He seems like a stand-up guy. And the fact that he's won all these competitions, and I'm going to just say something right now. I don't rely, I'm not one of those guys that's all about competitions. I don't care about that stuff. I like the strategy part of it. But let me just put it into perspective for you guys. This guy won six vetoes six vetoes and the thing is he broke all the records he smashed all the records for uh competition wins and all that stuff and he's only been able to play in half of them with the new rule switch this year if you're hoh you can't play in the veto that literally cuts out half the competitions for him because he's winning hoh one week and then he's winning the veto the next week so he's literally winning almost all the competitions he can actually play in it's really really impressive i give credit where it's due and this guy deserves the credit he's an absolute monster this guy is an absolute monster some of his game moves for sure 
uh, have been a little bit questionable and should he have done that or you know his this would have been a better move for him absolutely I'm not gonna say uh, otherwise for sure some of his moves were definitely whatever but I like the guy I like him just as a person I like how he's just crushing everyone in competitions and again like I'm saying I like how he's won six vetoes and it's not just like he's winning a veto just to win a veto if he didn't win these vetoes he was going home so it was all these do or die situations where it's like hey if I don't win I'm going home and he pulled it out and he wins and he saves himself now i want to give him more credit too to the the uh, the pretty boys as much as the name is kind of whatever i'm not a fan of the name it makes me cringe even saying it uh, i'm just not a fan of the name but i will say right now it was his idea to start it up on night one he's the one that put his neck out and started it up and he got the ball rolling and with all his veto wins and all the competition wins it's what kept them all together and you know if a guy like adam wasn't in that this season would have been completely completely different because because of him he's the glue to the alliance and he's the one that's saving them and he's the one that even came up with it it was his pre-game plan to do it and he followed through with it and hey they almost got to the final four, which I give credit where it's due. Again, that's impressive. Now, not to take anything away from them, but I feel a lot of the competition that they were against were kind of whatever. I mean, they really didn't have anybody opposing them. They had people that had the idea like, hey, let's get rid of them or let's break up these guys or whatever it is. But then what happens is all their friends are turning against them and going right up to the pretty boys like, hey, this person wants to get you out. Let's get them out. Hey, then the next week comes, hey, that person said your name. Let's get them out. And it was just an absolute mess. Instead of actually getting things put together and to actually form up a side to go against the pretty boys, it was just like the pretty boys were playing and everyone else was just like, whatever. Next week it's this person, whatever, whatever. And nobody challenged them on the other end. Yes, people had the idea of taking them out, but you had three weeks in a row, three HOHs in a row where the actual pretty boys didn't have power and none of them went home so you got to give them credit as much as you know whatever it's kind of cringy or whatever you got to give them credit but at the same time you got to say hey who were they really playing against um so it, it works both ways um and i feel like and i call it the other side of the house when it wasn't really another side it was just another group of people individuals maybe duos and trios or whatever against a real alliance um and that other side was kind of throwing each other under the bus to these guys um kind of giving them the game which kind of whatever uh it was their own fault and their own undoing um, but anyway, I talked to, uh, I did actually, I did some, I did a podcast with Eddie. I did a podcast with Kiki, uh, both great, great, great people. Guys, if you don't follow them on social media, check them out. Um, they're great, great people. I really like the, uh, the interviews I did with them. You can check them both on my YouTube channel as well and hear their thoughts of the game and just their views of it and everything. Uh, it's very, very interesting stuff. If you want to check that out, um, you know, just go through my YouTube and, and you'll find it. Um, and all that. So uh, I talked about Adam, how I think he deserves it simply because, you know, he did beast out. He saved his own ass when he had to. He did the job he had to do. And I totally give him credit for that. Uh, great, great job. Uh, Dane, same thing. I think Dane had a really, really good social game uh, where, you know, someone like Adam didn't. Adam got tied up with Sam in the first half, put cracks in his own alliance, kind of, you know, uh, pulled himself into a corner with Sam, kind of, you know, separating themselves from the house or whatever, put a target on them. Uh, totally different ways to get to the end as, say, Dane did. Dane had a fantastic social game. I think he's, a, he's one of the greatest social players to play in Big Brother Canada. Again, I give credit where it's due. I think he's doing a really good job. He had a lot of people that trusted him, a lot of people that wanted to work with him, even though he was a beast. He sat on the block a few times and didn't go home. Guys, that's insane. Again, when a player like Dane is on the block, you send them home. It's just what you do. It's a game. There's one winner at the end. And the fact that he's still here, um, you know, if it's for his doing or people he was working with that helped him along the way, whatever it is, they worked as a team. Um, he's still in the game today, which is just nuts to me. Uh, but yeah, I think Dane had a very, very good social game. Also another um, beast in competitions. He's crushing it just as well. And I think he, I think he did a great job too. I really do. Now I'm going to you know, I'm going to say another thing too. This isn't one of my favorite seasons. Absolutely. And it's not anything against the house guest at all. I think what it is, I think, I think Robin casted a great job casting. I do. Um, I don't think it's completely her fault. I think the cast had a lot of potential going into the game. There was a lot of potential and all that stuff. I just think the way that it all played out where like who matched up with who and who didn't match up with who, I think that's where it all fell apart. And I think that's what made for a boring season. Now it's not nothing against the house guest. It's not their fault. Uh, uh, kind of so to say it's just it's just the way it worked out um 
and that, hey, that's just the way it is. Um, you know, some people didn't even play at all. Some of the players were just kind of there, whatever, waited their turn and they left. And that's that happens every single season. I just think there was more of that this year. I think there's just a lot more players that kind of just waited around. You know, and, and here's the thing too. And, and this was part of my strategy um, going in where it's like you lay low for the first half, but laying low and doing nothing is two completely different things. Laying low is just not getting your neck out there, but you're moving pieces. You're not making the, you're not putting your, your neck right out on the line, but you are moving the pieces around to make things happen. But a lot of times, you know, the season, everyone's strategy was, oh, I'm going to lay low until jury. I'm going to lay low until jury. And you know, half of them aren't even in jury now. Um, but the difference is I think a lot of people just kind of sat back and did nothing. They didn't move pieces. They just waited till jury and they didn't even make it there. And that's kind of a problem too. Um, but anyway, uh, getting off track here. Um, but I have, I have a lot to say. I'm sorry I'm getting off track. But anyway, so uh, Dane, great social player. Uh, great, great, great job. Adam, and, and a competition beast. Adam, great uh, competition wise. And just putting the, the pretty boys together and all that. Now I want to talk about Kira. Um, you know, here, this is an, a character arc that I think is is one of the most interesting character arcs to actually kind of happen. Um, because, you know, Kira comes in, kind of, you know, not a lot of love for them. And uh, there was just a whole lot of whatever around it, okay? With the blood veto and, and this, there was a lot of mistakes that they made. And just as entertainment-wise, entertainment-wise, I think um, they had a lot working kind of against them. But uh, I'll tell you something, man. I, I think as the game went on, I think, you know, especially as, as Kira teamed up with Adam and they saw them play a little bit more, you know, I, I felt like the, 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 the popularity was kind of going up for Kira up until the last maybe week or so. I think what happens is um, I think Kira is getting manipulated a lot. But I think Kira believes it's her own doing. And I think that's the disconnect with, I guess, the fans. I don't know. I'm not watching the feeds, guys. I'm not watching them at all. So I don't know. I just know what's going on through the show. So I am missing a lot. I will be the first to admit it. I am missing a lot simply because the edited show. I just know simply from my seasons when I played the game and I watched the show. And it's like, wow, they're really missing the mark on what's actually going on. Who's actually making the moves. Um, they're twisting people's game around. Sometimes they look better than they are. Sometimes they look worse than they are. So again, my view on everything is very skewed because I'm not watching the feeds. I'm not in the house. So I don't have that actual feeling. So again, I'm just watching the edited show. So I'm getting what I get from the show. That's what I'm getting about Kira. So from what I feel is like um, either they're either they're not getting the credit they deserve or they really are getting manipulated and believing they're doing all these moves and in reality they aren't. So, okay, I think everyone wants or everyone should at least want to take Kira to the final two because again, that's a free $100,000. And again, I want to talk about the mistake they just made yesterday at the eviction where they had Mark, they had Kira, and then they had the three powerhouses of the season. So two of the of the five people are free $100,000 checks. Just either one of those sitting beside you, you win the game. And they got rid of one yesterday, which made no sense to me whatsoever. But that's what they chose to do. That's what they chose to do. So again, um, you know what? I, I'm actually very excited to meet Kira. Here's one of the people I do want to meet and talk to. Um, they live not very far from me, about an hour and a half away or something like that. So I'm sure I will be seeing a lot of them. And uh, I'm very interested to, you know, kind of kind of pick their brain and see see the mindset and all that stuff. But again, I don't think I don't think Kira has a chance to win. I just don't. That's just my opinion on it. And that's that on Kira. So we went through Kira, Dane, and Adam. Mark got evicted yesterday. Whatever. And Anthony, okay, here's my thing on Anthony. I think he's doing a really good job manipulating everybody. I give him the credit for sure. Um, do I think he thinks he's doing more than he is? Probably, but again, I'm watching just the edited show. Um, again, here's the other thing too. Um, Okay, if I was in that house, I wouldn't let Anthony talk to me the way he talks to the people. Again, I'm not taking anything away from him. I think he's doing a really good job. He's a really good talker. He's a very good manipulator. He's doing a really, really good job. I'm giving him credit, so please don't take this the wrong way. I think he's doing a really good job for what he has to do. Absolutely, I do, I do, I do. Do not take this uh, the wrong way. But again, I want to say is I'm going back to who he's against. 
Whenever he talks down to someone, he gets in their head. It's not a hard thing to do in that game to get in someone's head. But the fact that you're they're letting it happen, that's the crazy part to me. Guys, it's a game. He's not going to be able to do anything to you. It's a mind manipulating game. And if you're going to let him mind manipulate you, you're done. And that's what he's doing. As soon as someone goes against him, he kind of over talks them and just kind of just tells them, no, no, no. And he's so loud about it that they're just like, oh, okay. And they're just kind of like, well, you did. And he's like, no, I did. And they're like, well, okay, fine. And, and that's crazy crazy to me again because it's a game where you have to stand your ground if someone's pulling out your name you got to shut it down and the fact that he can openly say what he wants to say in front of everybody and the people that know the truth aren't fighting it that i don't think has anything to do with him i think that's other people's um just other people's wrongdoing that they're just not standing up saying you know what guys no this really is what's going on and he's getting away with it because of other people's kind of just lack of whatever so um i do want to give him credit though please don't take it the wrong way i'm not taking anything away from the guy uh do i think he can win in the end i really don't know honestly i don't think he can win i don't think he has enough friends in jury i think um people haven't seen uh, i think in their mind they don't see that he's done enough Again, I don't know, but that's my view. I just, when, when I saw that jury segment yesterday, what I got out of it, and again, I've been there, guys. I've been to jury twice. I know what it's like. And it doesn't matter if you're hearing someone's name in a negative way or in a positive way, you're hearing their name and they're being talked about in jury. That's very, very important to remember because when you saw in the jury segment yesterday, all of them had something kind of negative ish to say about Dane. But if you read between the lines, they're giving him respect. They're showing him respect. We're all here because of Dane. Oh, you're here because of Dane? I'm here because of Dane. Oh, damn Dane. And they're kind of like, oh man, that, that guy turned on me. He turned on me. Well, if they're all saying, hey, we're here because of Dane, by talking kind of like, oh, screw Dane, you're giving him credit. And if they're all going to sit down and say, hey, well, you're here because of Dane, and you're here because of Dane, and you're here because of Dane, and wait, I'm here because of Dane, wow, you know what? Dane's doing a good job. Maybe we should give him credit for what he's done. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you how it is. I've been to jury twice, as embarrassed as I am to say that. I'd rather say I won it twice, but I've been to jury twice. I know what it's like in there. And when they start saying someone's name, good or bad, he's in the running to win. Now, I want to just throw scenarios out there. Again, like I said, I just don't think Kira has a chance to win whatsoever. So I'm going to take Kira out of this equation. And it's nothing against Kira, uh, Kira at all. I'm just being honest with this podcast and with you guys watching. I think Kira has no chance. I'm going to push Kira aside. So it's going to be between Adam, Dane, and Anthony. Those are the three people. I think Dane beats Anthony. I think Adam beats Anthony. I So I'm going to take Anthony out of the equation and move him aside and it's between Dane and Adam. Now guys, this could be a tight, tight, tight race depending on what you respect in the game. Um, you know, do you respect the comp wins? Do you respect social game? Do you respect strategy? This could be a tight, tight game. Who had the better bonds? And this is where it's gonna come down to again and I'm gonna tell you guys something. I've always said this in all my videos. If you ever watch my How to Play Big Brother videos, Tips to Play Big Brother videos, or any video where I talk about this show, social game is everything. Everything, everything, everything. If you're down in the final two, and listen, you have if you could have mirror games, the exact same game as the person sitting beside you, but if you have a better connection with the jury, they're gonna vote for you. They could say, hey, you guys did the exact same thing, but you know what? I didn't talk to you all game when I talked to you, so I'm gonna give my vote to you. And that's that's how it works. Social game is everything. You want them, the people in the jury, to believe you're their friend and all that stuff because social connection is everything in that house. So, and that's where I give the edge to Dane. I think if Dane can get the final two, he is $100,000 richer and he will be the winner of the show. Uh, it's just a matter of him getting there. And again, he should have been out yesterday. If these guys were smart, they would have said, I don't care about legacy. I don't care to see three uh, pretty boys in the in the final three. I don't care about that. I'm here to win the game. Let's win the game. I'm here. I just took three months out of my life to do this, to win the game, to win $100,000, to be the champion, be the champion. And people are going to say, well, you want to beat the best to be there. No, I'd take 
10 marks to the final with me. If it was, you know, if there was 10 players like Mark, I would take every single one of them to the final instead of someone that, you know, deserves to win. Nobody deserves to win over you. When you're in that house, your mindset should be, I deserve to win, nobody else. I'm taking the weakest player with me where I can guarantee unanimous votes. And that's the, the, where I feel their mindset is in the wrong place. Uh, and it could cost somebody in the end if, say, Dane wins, HOH, or whatever, um, you know, one of their games now is going to be tossed out the window when in reality they could have just voted him out, you know, whatever hours earlier. So um, it, I just think it was the wrong, wrong, wrong move. 10 out of 10 times, Mark should have stayed. Mark should be sitting in the final two or Kira. Uh, let's see if they take Kira out this week. Who knows? But it'd be crazy too because there's no reason that those three boys should be sitting in the final three um, at all, at all, to be honest with you. So anyway, that's my thought on them, guys, on Anthony. That was my thought on Anthony. So I think he's doing a great job. But again, I think the players he was against was kind of just whatever. Um, he just he could control them. Where you know, if, and Actually, I talked about this with Evil Dick last night on, on his podcast. Uh, and he said, hey, man, if anybody talked down to me like that in my house, we'd be fighting. Like, we'd be arguing. And I, there's no, I would shut that down. And absolutely, I'd do the same thing. If someone talked down to me like that in a house, you shut it down. You shut it down right away. You don't let it happen. And you know the fact that these people let, let it happen all season, I don't know, man. It's kind of whatever for me. So anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on the players. Um, again, overall as a season, I think the cast as a whole had a lot of potential. A lot of potential. The way things paired up and people paired up and things played out was kind of whatever. Um, I know a lot of people aren't very happy with the season. But you know what? To be honest, the ratings are up. Uh, who knows why? But uh, hey, it is. And good to that and good on them. Uh, I'm happy for them for sure that, you know, it's good for the show. It's good for the business. It's good for, for all of us fans that the ratings go up. Because as long as the ratings are going up, that guarantees another season. So, hey, maybe I didn't like it. But I'm glad that, you know, other people are watching or we're all watching and that it's doing well enough that, yes, there will be another season. So, guys, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the love, all the support. I will be in Toronto next week, so I won't be doing another recap. But what I might do, I will be with everybody. You know, we talk all the time. You know, there's me, Bob, Maddie, Kevin, Peely, Ashley, Allison, season two, everybody. There's just a, there's a ton of us. We all talk all the time. And uh we're just looking forward to seeing each other. We don't see each other very often. We see each other once a year, especially the people out West uh, or East. Uh, we see each other once a year and that's at this time at finale. And that's why, you know, we all love to go is we finally get to see each other again. It's not a little reunion. It's nice. Plus we get to meet the new house guests, kind of welcome them in, uh, get to know them. I'm really excited to meet a bunch. You know, Kiki's great. I talk to Kiki all the time. She's fantastic. Um, I'm excited to meet Adam and a bunch of them, you know, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure. And again, if I wasn't cheering for them in the season, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean I'm not going to get along with them in person when I meet them. It's just, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't enjoy watching the game or cheer for them in the game. That has nothing to do with them on a personal level. And as a matter of fact, some of the people I played with that I completely didn't like on my season. In fact, we had nothing in common, didn't talk, had zero game, are some of my best friends today. That's just the way it goes. So I always separate game from the person. Whatever I say about these people as a game, it's purely game. And once I meet them as a person, it's purely on a personal level. So uh, I'm really excited to meet them uh, with all that being said. So if you're in Toronto, I believe there's gonna be a club night uh, I think it's on the Friday night after the finale. So if you're in Toronto, hey, check it out. We're all going to be there. I think there's going to be like 20 plus of us there from seasons one to whatever, six. Um, we're all going to be there. So guys, anyway, thank you very much. Again, thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. If you want to share this video, please go ahead. Uh, I appreciate it. You guys have been amazing. And I will be doing more for, you know, the American one, celebrity one. I like talking about those. So hit that sub button, guys. I will be doing more uh, recaps. I'll be doing more videos about Big Brother once this is all said and done. I'll break down some competitions. I'll do some other stuff. I got some other ideas I want to do. So hit that sub button, guys. Thank you again. Have a great weekend. Peace.